Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are reacting to film theory that Flash spoils Spider-Man's next villain by the film theorist. So, uh, the channel's been popping off. I mean, I have 102 subscribers. Subscriber, a lot of subscribers. And almost a lot of thousand views. So, yeah, it's it's been popping off. And we have Screen Rant Ripoff Studios. I mean, it's always Screen Rant. That's the original Screen Rant. Okay, so I've got some title ideas for the next Spider-Man film. That's great. Can't wait to hear them. Well, you know how everyone features some play on the word home? I think these are gonna be right on brand. Well, then go on, let's hear them. <coughs> Picture this, Spider-Man Home Wrecker where Peter cheats on MJ. Mm. Oh, wow. Well, that's upsetting yeah. because they just got together and they're not married and they don't have a home. I hear you loud yeah. and clear. How about this? Spider-Man homebound. Peter Parker develops terrible agoraphobia. Pretty hard to fight crime when yeah. you won't leave the house. People know who he is now. Maybe it makes him nervous. Well, I guess that makes sense. What else were you thinking? How about this one okay. then? Spider-Man home on the range. It's a western. Gunslinger meets web slinger. Ooh, well. dangerous and sticky. I like it. All right, well, how about you try this one on for size? Spider-Man Home Alone, where instead of using his spider powers, he instead sets creative traps using everyday- I think Sony would be mad about that title. Uh, Disney wouldn't be as much because Disney now owns Fox, and Fox owns Home Alone, so Disney won't be that mad. But Sony, uh, this Disney actually, because uh, Disney is the MCU, and then Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man's collaboration will be between Sony, Marvel, and a little bit of Disney, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Day household objects. Eat paint can, Hobgoblin. Oh, and then finally we have one that I know you're gonna love. Spider-Man Home for the Holidays. A non-denominational celebration. Well, um, if they released that in July, then everyone would be upset because they should have released it on September, December, actually, December. Because it's holidays. For the entire family. Well, I'm sold. Call up the boys. We've got ourselves something to announce at Comic-Con. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film well, Theory! That a, you well, that was a great edit. What are their editors now? You stepped it up. That budget was like... That was probably like a thousand dollars. And put... And took like ten hours to make, but... ...using our theorist tingle to dispel okay, all of yeah. Mysterio's illusions. Wonderful. And let me tell you, between fake restaurants, fake Mysterios, and fake Nick Furies, I was tingling all over the place while I was watching Far From Home. Probably should get that one checked out by a doctor. But seriously, yeah. I felt like I couldn't trust anything. The ushers were in there trying to pry me out of my seat, and I'm like, no! I feel the barf drones around me. You're all just trying to make me think the movie's over, but we're still somewhere in Act 2. Long story short, I'm not allowed in that theater again. On the plus side, Ooh. I left Far From Home with a heck of a lot of theory fodder. So today I'm theory tackling fodder. a theory that is so speculative, speculative, it's more hypothesis than theory. I know! I know! Blasphemy. But coming out of the theater, I couldn't get out of okay. my head, and I thought it was a cool topic to talk about on the series. You see, okay. the most important part of Far From Home isn't so much what's in the movie, it's instead what's coming after the movie. Far From Home isn't just another step in Marvel's stairway to box office heaven, it's clear that this movie is acting as an inflection point between where we've been and where we're going. A gateway to the post-Endgame era of Marvel, where everything is suddenly being called into question. For and Avengers Endgame is the most, most top grossing movie of all time. It beat Avatar, and now it has like 2.79 billion dollars. They made so much money on that, on that movie. I mean... Marvel got a piece of it, Disney got a piece of it, did Sony get a piece of it? I'm pretty sure not. I'm pretty sure Disney didn't. I mean, Sony didn't get a piece of it. Was Spider-Man in that movie? I don't remember. 
from your leadership to your very identity. And as a part of that, I'm here today to predict Spider-Man's next major role in all of it. Because at this point, the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies have tipped their hand just a bit too far. I think they've revealed okay. just a wee bit too much. And as a result, I have a solid hypothesis as to where things solid are headed hypothesis. for the old web heb in the next feature film. So book your okay. tickets now, ladies and gentlemen, because Spider-Man's next opponent will be a massive showdown with the Sinister Six. For those Sinister of you who might not be Six. familiar, the Sinister Six yeah, is a team I'm consisting of a that. number of Spider-Man's nastiest villains. Yeah. Can you guess how many? Usually a massive team-up of supervillains would be okay. something that would develop pretty late into a comic's career as they figured out how to come up with new exciting storylines for the same character. But when it comes yeah. to the Sinister Six, their beginnings actually start as far back as the beginning I mean, that's of- That's pretty hard to say. Sinister Six, Sinister Six, this is Sinister Six. It's pretty hard to say fast. It's like a tongue twister, you know? Spider-Man comics themselves back in 1963. And since that time, there have been no okay. less than 24 different versions, which have had names like the Sinister Six, the Sinister Seven, the Sinister Twelve, the Superior Six, the Hexagon of Haters, the Six Most Sinister, and the Six Men of Sinistry. That Hexagon one was a joke, by the way, but it's not like you could tell, right? This group's gone through more reboots than the Spider-Man movies have. But in all seriousness, me standing here as my virtual cutout saying that the films are going to feature Spider-Man's most iconic villain group probably isn't going to be setting the world on fire. So instead, let's get even more specific by picking out who exactly those six characters are gonna be. That would be okay. a little bit more impressive, right? Yeah. I mean, I need to do a lot of making up for past failed prediction theories, so nailing the uh -huh. six major villains for Peter P's next outing in a movie that okay. hasn't even been announced yet would uh -huh. be tight. Over the course of Marvel history, there have been over 40 members of the Sinister Six, which members. leaves us with a lot mem of villain options. 40 villains? Spider-Man has, has 40 villains. I thought he only had like 10, maybe. At, at least, at, at most, ten. At least six. Because there's the six. Uh, he actually has forty. The slot into the That's group. Great. It's like the popular frat of the comics. Everyone's so rushing to get in. Luckily, house. I don't need to rely on my okay. usual prediction methods. There have been plenty of solid okay. hints sprinkled throughout the series. If we rewind back to Homecoming, by the end of that film, we've already met 50% of the crew who will be heading up this new version of the Sinister Six. The first and most obvious inclusion is Adrian Toomes, aka the Vulture, who may have been kind enough to preserve Spidey's secret identity in prison. If I knew who he was, he'd already be dead. But now that the whole world knows the truth, all uh. bets are off. I've, I've watched Spider-Man Homecoming two times now, one on Netflix, one in the theaters. Toombs so, has got himself an axe to grind. It's also worth noting that the Vulture is an OG member of the Sinister Six. The original seven iterations of this group all featured the Vulture prominently, so not okay. including him when he's already an established part of this cinematic universe would be a big surprise. Yeah. And that's not all. In Vulture's crew, we have ourselves a brief passing reference to yet another classic Spider-Man villain, the Shocker. In the MCU, Shocker isn't much of a supervillain, but instead yeah, he's just a sucky shocker. salesman who fires off Vulture's illegal rockets in public and attracts the attention of Spider-Man, which in turn makes Vulture realize that old Sparky is too much of a liability and needs to be let go in the most violent way possible. Well, initially it looks like Vulture's just turned the Sinister Six into the Fearsome Five. He quickly replaces Shocker with a new Shocker, quite explicitly passing the torch. Yeah. Now you're the shocker. I don't think that's just a throwaway line there, friends. It's brief, and it's one that's easy to write off as just a tongue-in-cheek Easter egg. But remember, we saw a similar series of events become the major plot twist in Far From Home, where a bunch of smaller okay. characters that had been set up via past movies suddenly emerged to the forefront to become major players. So the shocker having a similar reveal in the third Spider-Man movie? Oh yeah, it is definitely precedented. And not only that, but shocker yes, is indeed a canonical member of the Sinister Six in the comics. I mean. Oh. Practically everyone is, but still, he's there, yeah. usually as a member of the expanded Sinisters, like oh, the Sinister the Seven and the Sinister 66. You heard that right, 66. Or I thought Infinity War had a lot of characters. So anyway, that- 66? Spider-Man fought off 66 villains. I thought, I thought Spider-Man all had only 40, and now it's 66. 
Great. It is two villains right there in the first movie, but we can keep going. There are a couple other tertiary villains that we see running in Vulture's crew, but I'm more hesitant to count on these guys because they rarely appear in the Sinister Six, and they just don't have okay. the same level of name appeal. Specifically, I'm referring to the Prowler, late in Homecoming by the childish the Gambino himself, Donald Glover, and the Tinkerer, who is worth mention because, well, if I didn't, Tinkerer. you guys would light me up in the comments thinking I missed him. I didn't, he just isn't interesting enough to make the official official counted squad here. Which then of course brings us to the end of Homecoming. Here the Vulture goes to prison and meets Mac Gargan. That name doesn't ring a bell, the tattoo on his neck certainly should, a oh. scorpion. Looks like Mac is carrying on the grand tradition of arthropods in this franchise by taking the role of the scorpion. A guy who traditionally has a giant tail that shoots acid. How the more technology centric okay. films will make this attack strategy less awkward is up for debate, but there's no doubt yeah. that he's gonna be joining forces with tombs. In just his brief scene alone, it's immediately established that he's also after Spider-Man and wants to team up. So to recap, okay. at the start of Far From Home, we know that both these baddies are still in prison together, and the new Shocker is still floating around <coughs> out there somewhere too, giving us yeah. a solid lead on at least three out of six Sinister. Let's see who else is gonna surface in Far From Home. In the beginning of the new movie, Peter and his friends just got themselves blipped out of existence for five years by Thanos. The very fabric yeah. of reality has been shaken. Whoopsie! But no worries, the Avengers figured out that pesky time travel business and now everything is back to normal with yeah. everyone now completely acclimated to aliens and magic yeah not everyone uh, it did do so, so successfully i mean iron man died uh captain america got his death with peggy which was pretty cool and Tony so. Stark destroying huge sections of major cities, it turns out to be the perfect place for Mysterio to enter the fray. With the world willing to believe literally anything at this point, Quentin Beck and his organization yeah. of background players from all the past movies decide to create their own superhero. A soldier from another universe, Mysterio. Mysterio. And if there was ever a superhero slash villain perfect for the internet age, this guy is it. He's fake, he only does things for the clout, his entire okay. reputation depends on everything being on video, because if there was indeed a true Avengers level threat, Mysterio would just be flat out useless. In short, Mysterio would just make a great YouTuber. That would be funny if it wasn't completely depressing. Anyway, chalk Mysterio up as another okay. core member of our new sisterhood of the traveling sinisters. Now, I know the first thing you're gonna say, but we saw Mysterio die at the end of Far From Home, which yes, is absolutely true. I totally think Quentin Beck yeah. is dead, despite my best efforts in researching for this episode to prove otherwise. But in Far from home, we're very clearly shown a shot of his team taking the computers and drives that retain all of Mysterio's files. I mean, think about it. They were pulling the Mysterio shtick before they got control of Edith. Edith just enabled them to do it at a bigger scale. And throughout the movie, they very intentionally show Quentin Beck and Mysterio separately. Mysterio is just a projection, a drone of what this superhero suit looks like. So not only can Mysterio come back, that sort of plotline is also canon in the source material. Mysterio's original plot in the early days of the Spider-Man comics starting back in issue 13 is pretending to be a good guy, exposing Spider-Man's true <coughs> identity to J. Jonah Jameson, and then faking his own death, which, wouldn't you know it, all happened to be the key beats we see him do in Far From Home. So we should consider staying true yeah. to his comic book origins and remember that he was also an OG alum of the Sinister oh, Six, oh, taking oh, part in the first five yeah. iterations of the group, taking a break for six and seven, and then coming back strong in eight and ten. Meaning that Mr. Mysterio is picking up our slot number four. Now, from here, our job gets a little harder because we have to get to villains that we haven't directly seen yet, but ones that I think the movies are definitely setting us up for. The first. I'm pretty sure Doc Ock will be there. I'm pretty sure that's the rhinoceros guy. First open I'm slot, I think, sure. will take advantage of Marvel's newest playthings, the Skrulls. Captain Marvel oh, was keen scrolls. on showing off the Skrulls okay. and how well they're able to infiltrate the ranks of normal humans, but it was odd to see them also show up in Far From Home, a story they seem pretty disconnected from. Why would Marvel be showing us this now, at this point yeah. in the movies? Well, I think it boils down to two reasons, both of which go back to that inflection point I was inflection talking about at the beginning point. of the episode. First, they okay. know that Spider-Man is and will 
will always be their biggest hero. He's Marvel's equivalent of Batman. I mean, sure, okay. Iron Man was big for the movies, but Spider-Man is just iconic. He was big before the Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe. He was big before Iron Man really changed the superhero yeah, scene. Okay. So if the Skrulls are gonna play a big role in the future of the MCU, they need to be introduced to mainstream audiences who may not have seen Captain Marvel through a more mainstream movie. I mean, almost all the people who watched Captain Marvel. I didn't, but it made a billion dollars in theaters. I didn't think it would, it would be that much, but it made a billion dollars. A years. Spider Man so, uh, movie. So there's your oh, reason one. Okay. But there is a second and more relevant reason that applies to our theory today. You see, there just so happens to be a Spider Man villain with a very scroll like power set, the Chameleon. Up? He's oh, a shapeshifter who's able to disguise himself behind the face of whoever he wants. In okay. fact, the Chameleon was Spider Man's first ever villain, introduced oh. in Spider-Man number one way back in 1963, and barring some fan theories, he's never- Is, is, is Spider-Man a part of the Fantastic Four? Uh, what is this? Why is the Fantastic Four here? Fantastic Four think I'm trapped, but I don't suspect my real power. One, way is back- Is the Fantastic Four before? Uh, in the comics? Comics, he was in- he was in Fantastic Four, okay. 1963, okay. and barring some fan theories, he's never actually appeared on the big screen before, which leaves yeah. the pathway totally open to bringing him in via shapeshifters that we Ooh. already know exist in this universe, yeah. the Skrulls. So all you would need to slot him into the Sinisters is a Skrull gone rogue, one with a chip on their scaly green shoulder. That's okay. not just speculation. We may already have him identified. Many Ooh. fans believe they've already spotted this guy in the MCU right here, the guard who's oh. sent to surveil people. Peter while he's in Europe. It's a small detail, but his name is Dimitri, and wouldn't you know it, but that exact name, Dimitri, Dimitri Smirnikov, is the exact identity of the chameleon in the comics. Ooh. Give this man a pledge pin, ladies and gentlemen. He is our number five, which leaves us with one last Come slot on, to fill. And honestly, it could go in any number duck, of really uh, cool directions. Duck, uh. When it comes to the Spider-Man movies thus far, the MCU has had a habit of tricking us. They know we know these stories and characters. That's what happens when a hero gets rebooted so frequently in such a short amount of time. So to keep us off balance, they're, to borrow a phrase from the show that must not be named, subverting oh. expectations. They're reinventing or reimagining the good and bad guys in ways that we don't expect to keep everything fresh and new. Fresh Aunt May new. isn't old. MJ doesn't... Jane, and Peter's Ooh. biggest bully Flash isn't a typical jock, he's just an even bigger nerd. In much the same way, Ooh. there are villains creeping around here that we may not even see coming. For example, you remember one of Peter's relatively unmemorable teachers back in Homecoming? Well, her name is Mrs. Warren, which Mrs. could Warren. be a name picked totally at random, or it could be that she's a reimagined version of Miles Warren, Peter's Miles biology Warren. professor starting in Spider-Man 148, who ends up becoming one of the Sinister Six villains, the Got Jackal. Me? A villain mind you, who goes on to clone Peter, his dead girlfriend, and his mm. dead parents in a plotline that wasn't super well received by comic fans, yeah. but still, she's there and waiting to be swiped right on. So go ahead, Sinister Six, take a chance. It's also been pointed out by others that huh. Spider-Man's been seen battling the Man Freddy crime family, leading us to believe okay. that the comic book villain Silvermane, who's Silver associated Mane. with that family in the comics, may also be floating around along with a whole slew of his accomplices. There are plenty of other Easter eggs like these, and they might materialize down the line, but here's the thing. None of these guys are cutting the mustard for me. Up until now, everyone we've talked about we've either seen before, like Mysterio or Vulture, or as just a backup player, like Shocker or Chameleon. We need a big name. We need a major player. The Sinister Six needs its new lead singer, its headliner. We need ourselves either Doc Ock, or more likely, the Green Goblin. Yeah, I, I said it. Green Goblin or Doc Ock. The two most popular villains of Spider-Man. And of the two, I think the Green Goblin is all set up and ready to roll out. Not only is the Green Goblin one of the most frequent members of the Sinister Six, but because yeah. the Goblin is usually a member of the Osborn family, who are tech Osborne. billionaires just like Tony Stark, they tend to have Steve ties Buscemi? to most of the other villains in the comics, and likewise, in the new cinematic universe where technology is fueling a lot of these characters' powers, they would have connections in that realm is too. That, the is that Steve Buscemi? Do I... Do I see why is that Steve Buscemi? 
brown hair. Osborne technology would help know. supplement what the vulture is doing. Maybe? The Osborne technology would help supplement the Mysterio gang. The Osborne okay. technology would help make the shocker stronger. But now let's go back to something I said earlier about subverting expectations. Remember Flash, the nerd Flash? bully? He is very yeah. clearly being set up for a future plot line. Throughout the movie, there's this ongoing thread about yeah. his relationship with his parents. A weird text message thread with him, and that one scene when they return home and he's met by their driver. In both scenes, Flash is being ignored by his parents. They're absent. They've forgotten about him. It's also clear that they have a very formal relationship, with Flash having to call them father and mother. It's very similar yeah. to the way that Harry Osborn reacts with his father Norman Osborn in most other Spider-Man stories, including the Sam Raimi movies. Peter, may I introduce my father, Norman Osborn? Flash's family is also very rich. T technically, this is my dad's car, sir. Just like the Osborns. Yeah. Heck, it's even been suggested that those super rich Osborns are busy building Oscorp's new headquarters in the old Avengers Ooh. building, which you can see being constructed in Far From Home. But I know what you're thinking. He's Flash Thompson. He's not an Osborn. Yeah. And you know what? That's just what I thought too. That's what literally every fan wiki online says. But it seems like Flash literally Thompson. everyone has been jumping to conclusions here. Because at no point in the movies do we ever hear Flash's last name. He is never once called Flash Thompson. Not once. It is always only Flash. Um, Ooh. Matt? Even right here in the credits, he's only listed as Flash. Matt, seriously. You might want to that right that. there is our smoking gun. Loyal theorists, the big twist, the way our expectations are going to end up being subverted in the next Spider-Man movie is that Flash's last name is going to be revealed as Osborne. Matt! What? I'm building up a good flow here. You're throwing off my dramatic reveal. Well, here's a more dramatic reveal for you. Oh, oh, yeah. So it's not in the script or the credits, but... Yeah. Well, why didn't you tell me earlier? Well, because just... even if he is Flash Thompson, there's a very real chance that he could have been just adopted by the Osborns. That sort of angle would have support from the comics. In the story, Norman Osborn okay. takes Flash under his wing, gives Flash a job, makes him feel like part of the family, and ultimately turns him against Spider-Man, who he was formerly idolizing, just like we see Flash idolizing Spider-Man in Far From Home. So there you okay. have it, friends. We got ourselves our six villains. Vulture, Shocker, Scorpion, Chameleon, Mysterio, and Green Goblin. All set and ready to go. But to close things out here, I think I'll put myself even further out on a limb. I think it's worth pointing out that there's one villain in this group who is different than all the others. Vulture. Vulture is very clearly established to be a family man. I built this whole place because I got people I have to look after. He's not about world dominance or being a renowned superhero. Heck, he doesn't even want to attract the attention of the Avengers. If you okay. put damage control for the Avengers down here, we're through. He's not in it for the clout like Mysterio. He's not in it for revenge. He's only in it to take care of his wife and his daughter. The same daughter who Spider-Man saved at the end of Homecoming and who then went on to rescue Vulture himself during the final battle. We already know that Vulture wouldn't give up Peter Parker's identity to Scorpion and we know he has at least half a dozen opportunities to finish him off during that final confrontation and doesn't. So when faced with the option of teaming up alongside a bunch of villains who are bent on world domination, well, he might initially go along for the ride. It's my prediction that Vulture will instead defect to instead protect someone who shares his values and goals, someone who still appreciates helping out the little guy, the local neighborhood. In the end, Vulture is going to be the one to end up protecting Spider-Man against the rest of the Sinister Six. Ooh. Anyway, that is more than enough speculation and fan fiction for the day. Okay, so yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and of course, peace to all the people have. Peace, peace.